Hey friends, today we're going to be fixing our Cricut Maker. Do not worry, it's a very simple process. Looking at other tutorials online and looking at it, it can be intimidating, but hopefully I can give you a very clear step-by-step -step of the process because what I've seen on the internet is there's shaky cameras and not very clear step-by-step. -step. So hopefully we can talk it out and visualize it really clearly so that if you run into the same problem of your rubber roller pressure feet getting corrupted and corroded and, and destroyed essentially, I have a sample, this is the old one, it's all gooey and nasty. So um, I already took it off, this is already fixed, but you're gonna see the whole process here in a minute. Who am I? I'm an artist, I make art to amplify important messages. I also do some other fun stuff like I use my Cricut Maker to make vinyl shirts for my game streaming I do, but I also use it to make masks for spray paint and things like that that I'm working on the pieces behind me. So come on back to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to go after 100,000 subscribers. If you wanna see me make the art, I do all my art via live stream, but today, we're gonna help you fix your Cricut Maker. Um, so let's get into it. All right, before we get started, let me tell you the tools you're gonna need. The first thing you're gonna need is a T9 star head. Um, I found a kit at Walmart for 10 bucks. Um, this might be the only thing that you might not have lying around is the star head. You're gonna need it to pull out the screws that are on the top of the lid here. Um, so that's one thing, just a regular Phillips screwdriver, um, a little short Phillips screwdriver. I just used like a bit like this that helped, um, a pair of needle nose pliers, um, uh, some kind of flathead screwdriver to mainly for a prying device. So little small prying device like that. And then I also used a, uh, ratchet, uh, what kind of wrench is this called? A uh, socket wrench kind of thing um, because I needed to get underneath here and I needed to break um, the screws. It was really hard to do it by hand, so I needed a little leverage to do it. So that's how I used it, is to use the screw like that. Um, you'll also need to buy your new washer, your new pressure feet. So I'll link up where I got mine from Amazon in the description and also I, broke one of my springs um, that the tension springs so I bought another set of tension springs I'll link those up as well just in case you do the same thing and I think that covers the tools that you're going to need you might also use a little pair of tweezers to grab small things um, all right let's get going before we get started though I must sell I already took mine apart at the beginning of the video mine was already taken apart so I'm basically like Re, I reassembled it so um, t in order to show you the step-by-step. -step. So part of what you're looking at is it's already taken apart and it's a little shaky, but hopefully you can still get the idea of what um, supposed to happen. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we have to pry off this panel right here. And if you can find the very side of it, on the side, um, there, there'll be enough space to get a screwdriver in right in this kind of um, area right here and you can kind of tweak it in there and start to pry it up. When you start to pry up this piece, it is glued down so it'll crack and pop. It sounds harsher than it really is, but it just takes a gentle, once I was able to peel up the end side, I could work along it and, and eventually pop up each of the things and it has these little pegs that fit in holes in here. So it'll eventually pop up if you're gentle as you work it, work it out. The next thing, once that's popped up, there'll, there'll be four screws that have a star head on in there. It's a T9, T9 star head is what it is. So you'll wanna get a star screwdriver head and um, take out the screws that come out from right here. I've already taken them out, so I can't show you the example, but you take them out, it'll allow this top panel the lid to pop off so that will move out of the way and then once you get the top off you'll want to flip it over these next two steps can be happen in any order but you'll flip it to the bottom on the bottom there'll be rubber feet pop off the rubber feet and then with the Phillips small Phillips screwdriver you can take off there'll be four long screws that you take off out of here that's the next step 
all fairly simple so far. The next step is there's gonna be seven screws up under here. And so you're gonna have to get under there. So I used a combination of just a, a screw bit like this. They're, they make small screwdrivers you can do. They make um, L-shaped screwdrivers. And I also used, and for the um, ones that were hard to break, like I couldn't just break them by hand. I needed to break them with something stronger. I used a uh, ratcheting wrench to get under there and break those ones. And so we can see, and what I had to do when I did this process was I used a piece of tape on the door to keep it from falling open as I was working. Um, but I would have to stand up under inside of the lid under here. There'll be some screw holes there. You can see one right there, screw holes, and you can slide this, um, head, you know, just with hand, your hand to move it out of the way. The hardest one was the one that's deepest under here for me. That was the hardest one for me to get out because it was the tightest and I had to use my, this wrench to get it out. Once you're able to get the screws out from under here, they look like they are little flat tops, um, fill up screws. There'll be seven of them that you take out from under here. You get those out. Then the top should be able to pop off. So it takes a little bit of finagling. It gets caught up a little bit by the hinge. So you have to kind of work it off. You should be able to pull the top off. And then once you could pull the top off, there's a connection to the little chip, the board, the control board. I recommend disconnecting that so it could come apart. I just pulled the tape off with it so the whole top can be moved out of the way. Okay, once you pull the top off, we need to take this tension string off, this tension spring off right here, and there's a C-clip that we have to take off right there. So I'm just using a Leatherman pliers. You're gonna grab it from the ring here. Don't grab it from the wire. I did this once already and I actually messed it up because I grabbed it in the wrong spot. So I bought some new ones of those to put on, but grab it from the, the ring, pull up, and it'll come off, and then the bottom part will just come off there. So one tension spring is off. We have to repeat this on the other side, and then this um, there's a little C-clamp right in here. You can use some little poker or maybe a flat screwdriver or some uh, uh, something like this to pull it off. It, it'll spin around so you can find it. if it's spun the opposite direction, you can spin it where you need to. So a little C clip like this will be on there. And then we basically repeat the process on the other side. So let's go to the other side. So on the other side, um, we have this motor that we have to get out of the way. So first, in order to get the motor out of the way, there are two screws on the left side, silver screws. Um, this is the top one and there's one right underneath of it. I actually already took out the one below there, but we'll take off the top one here. And there's there are two screws with little washers on them that look like that. And then on the right side, there's these, there's two black screws, one right here. And then I already took out the one below there, but I'll have two black screws to take out. And the black screws hold, not only hold the um, motor there, but there's this support bar that's holding as well. So that's holding the support bar as well. So and then you get the screw out. They're same way, little black screw with washers. And then the support bar, um, can't quite see it. There you go. So on the bottom, the support bar is just held on. It's just setting on a little peg down there. It just pulls off. So there's like this support bar that you'll take off. And then the motor will f move, move away. You don't have to unplug it. You can just set it aside. So once you pull the motor off, you can pull this, this gear out. And then as you can see inside here, there's another spot for, 
There's another spot for a C-clamp that we pulled off on the other side. I've actually already taken it off, but it, it'll go right here. So you pull off that C-clamp on that side. And then you also want to remove the tension spring. Remember to grab it from the ring, not from the spring itself. Pull it off, there we go. Another tension spring off. Put that in the bucket. All right, now, now that the C-clamps are off on both sides, you can take the bar, the tension bar out. First on this, the right side, you could take off this entire piece right here. Take that entire piece off. You could have done that earlier. Take that entire piece off. And then when you're looking at it inside, you can then shimmy this tension bar to the right. It, it kind of takes a little bit of finagling. Um, you need to kind of shimmy it a little, move it around, and eventually it'll move enough to the right side that you can move it out of the way. Um, you have to decide where this thing lives to get you out of the way. I find if you kind of go up, it gives you enough space to get it out, and then you can shimmy it out. So now I've already taken off the old rubber, rubber wheels. I've already taken them off, so it's all clean. I cleaned it all up. It had goo all over it. I cleaned it all up. So just got to remember the right side will have this step right here and the left side is just pure straight. So I'm going to put the new ones on it and we'll reassemble. All right. I boiled the new rubber rings um, and I'm putting them on. You're supposed to heat them up to like 170 degrees. I um, have a little tool here that has a gap that I could use to like help press them on. The other one actually went on fairly easily. And so this one, see if I can press it on. Yeah, it's, it's sliding on fairly easily. And I suppose once it cools down, it'll be um, really hard to move again. But there they are. These ones, if I didn't say it already, are much stiffer than the original ones. The original ones are much more rubbery. These ones are much harder plastic. So then they've been, I don't know, I, I found these on watching another person's YouTube tutorial on doing this. So I just went with the same ones. Um, now let's reassemble. And I'm just gonna leave it all in place, the camera in one place as I reassemble. Remembering the tapered end goes in first on the right side and then Slide it to the left. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is put the C-clamp back on this side. <clears throat> and then we'll put the tension spring back on this side. Tension back on, and I'm putting the motor back on, the two black screws on. All right, motor side is back together. Now we can see this side together. So first thing we can do is put this thing back on. So, and then let's go ahead and put the C-clamp back on. Yeah, go. C-clamp's back on. Now we need to put tension back on. Since I ruined one of the springs, it might still work. I was testing it. It seems to be strong, but I ruined it. So I found more on Amazon that I'll just use one of these. There we go. Tension is back together. So now we need to put the lid back together and put this back on the lid. When we're putting the lid back on, you can see that in the lid, there's these little hooks right here, and you want them to fit into the hooks, into the, the slots in the back of your machine. So um, it's a little bit tricky to make that happen. Now 
There we go. Ah, that felt, I could feel it that time. You just gotta press. You've gotta press, press, as you slide it down, press the top of the back and it'll catch those spots. Okay, so now that that's in the right spot, we can flip it up possibly like this. Um, I'm using my tape to hold the door open. And then I'm gonna put these screws back in here. This seems to be the easiest way to do it. So we'll do this first. Ironically, the one that was the hardest to get out <laughs> is the easiest to get back in. I was I did this once already and I had to do the ones on the right side. I felt like were more difficult to do. All right, those are all in. Now we can put the bottom screws in. Can't forget to put the little feet on. Now I have to put the lid back on. This is where we need the star head for those two. And now that those are all together, we can put this cap back on. And then there's little holes for it to line up in. Maybe make sure there's no goober on it. Help it go in. This, these were glued originally. So we don't need to glue them anymore. Just in case we have to do this again. All right, there, it's all back together. We got the new rollers in place. Um, let's turn it on and see if it grabs the paper. Seems to be rolling. Let's just feed this in here. Seems to grab it correctly. Seems to be working properly. It wasn't even, with the old feet, it wasn't even grabbing it wasn't even pulling in the mat before it was all sliding around but this seems to be doing the trick just nicely All right, we did a little test of it just at the end there to see that it actually works. So it looks like it's working great. Or another reminder, I am an artist. I do make art to amplify important messages. I'm actually gonna have an exhibition this summer, um, summer of 2024 at in Tennessee, at Tennessee State University at the Hiram Van Gordon Gallery. We're gonna be there May 13th through the 30th. What I do is I do live stream performance artwork. So like the art you see behind me that I've been live streaming on my channel and I've live streamed a lot of other artwork. I'll be live streaming from the gallery um, 72 drawings of Justin Jones and 69 drawings of Justin Pearson to amplify the messages that they're trying to um, get behind such as, you know, common sense gun laws and those kind of things. So um, let's rally behind this. If you wanna come out, you can come out to the gallery in person. If you wanna watch it on the live stream, you can. Obviously this video probably will live a lot longer after I've done that exhibition. So if you're finding this after the fact, those live streams still live on the YouTube channel, um, but you could probably purchase the original body of work. You can purchase other art, artwork of mine. I'll probably be doing other exhibitions in the future. So be sure to follow my account, follow what's going on and um, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all those other places, but especially subscribe here on YouTube. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. So let's make it happen. All right. Peace, my friends. As always, be loving, kind and patient. Bye.